Hello ladies and gentlemen, here's your first video, chapter 4. We're going to review the naming of ionic compounds and uh, covalent compounds as you called them uh, last year in Science 10. What you're staring at is the periodic table, I'm sure you recognize it. A couple main things right off the bat. There's a staircase right here. Okay. Uh, to the left of the staircase, these are your metals and they have a positive charge. And to the right of the staircase, this way, these are your non-metals. And they have a negative charge. Uh, when you make an ionic compound, ionic compounds consist of a metal and a non-metal. The metal is always written first, again it's positive, and the non-metal is written second, and again it's negative. Covalent compounds, which should be called molecular compounds, which you'll learn why later, Molecular compounds only consist of nonmetals. Two, three, four, five, six of them. All nonmetals. Before we get rolling, a couple terms I think you should know, maybe you're already familiar with. Monatomic, that should be an A, sorry. Um, and this, yeah, monatomic, um, or anything that consists of just one element. Okay, nothing fancy there. Mono means one. Um, diatomic, that's two elements. You guys recognize a lot of diatomic molecules. Those are your gases. Some teachers call them the Super 7. I have no idea why or where that came from. But it's basically, it's the H2, uh, N2, O2, F2, Cl2, Br2, and I2. Okay, those are your diatomic gases. Triatomic just means three elements. A good example of that is ozone. Um, that's just O3. And polyatomic means many, more than one. For example, like PO4, SO3, SO2, uh, those are polyatomic. There's hundreds of thousands of examples of those. We're going to start off by writing ionic formulas. Um, ionic formulas consist of a metal and a nonmetal. So you're going to be given the name. You've got to look up the metal and the nonmetal, find those symbols, find the charges that are on your periodic table, and you would need to balance the charges, which is the part that is always the trickiest for you, so we'll we'll do a few of these together. So sodium chloride. Sodium is Na, chloride is Cl. Na has a charge of plus one, Cl is a charge of minus one. You have to combine these elements so the charges add up to zero. The overall charge on a formula must be zero, has to be neutral. So if Na is a plus one and Cl is a plus one, those go together one and one. So you're going to get NaCl as your final answer. Lithium oxide. Lithium is Li, it's a plus one. Oxide is oxygen, it's a minus two. So you can see that there are more negative charges than there is positive charges. You have to add these elements together so they equal zero. So you're going to need two lithiums to combine with that one oxygen so the charges can be zero. Because lithium, with this, which is a plus one, you need another one that's a plus one, combined with the minus two will give you zero. Okay? Some teachers like to say you can just swap the numbers and you drop them. So you get Li2O. Whatever works inside your head, but the idea is that you're balancing the charges. One more, potassium sulfate. Potassium is K, has a charge of plus one, um, sulfate, I probably meant that to say sulfide, let's just change that right now. Sulfide, that's an S. It is a minus 2, so you're going to get K2O. We'll try the rest of those in class tomorrow. Moving on. Polyatomic ions, so those are found on the chart on the back of your periodic table. They're ions that are always in groups together. They have different endings like eights and eights and OUS. So barium nitrate, you know it's a polyatomic because it ends in 8. So you're going to look for that thing on the back of your periodic table. Barium is BA, it has a charge of plus 2. Nitrate is NO3, it has a charge of minus 1. You have to put those together in such a way that the charges balance off. You're going to need two nitrates to make a negative 2 charge to balance off with the plus 2. So barium is going to combine with two nitrates. And you need to put brackets around the nitrate to show that you've got two of everything in there, two nitrates. Calcium hydroxide is a Ca plus two 
Hydroxide, look on the back here, periodic table, it's a minus one. Again, you need two hydroxides to cancel off that plus two charge of the calcium. So CaOH2. Brackets around the OH to show that you need two of the OHs. The zinc phosphate, zinc is Zn and it's a plus two. Phosphate's PO4, it's a minus three. Now here's something different. Two and three, they don't go into each other really, really nicely. Twos and threes, you need to make sixes. Or you can think of it as swap and drop the number. Whatever works. You're going to need three zincs combined with two PO4s so those charges cancel off. Three zincs will give you plus six, two PO4s will give you minus six, and they cancel off to be zero. And here's a weird one, ammonium. Ammonium is one of two polyatomic things that are positive. Ammonium is NH4, and it's a plus. Sulfide is an S, it's a minus 2. So you're going to need two ammoniums to cancel off those minus 2s from the sulfide. So you're going to have NH4, 2, S. Sometimes you need Roman numerals. Roman numerals will tell you the charge of the metal if there's more than one charge in your periodic table. I'm sure we all know these, but let's just write them out anyway. If you have an I, that's a 1, there's a 2, there's a 3, IV is 4, think of it as like 1 minus 5, so V is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and X is 10. So if you have iron 3 oxide, it's telling you that the charge on iron is plus 3, and look up oxygen, it's minus 2. So again, you're going to need to make sixes. You're going to need two Fe's and three O's, or you can swap and drop the numbers. Chromium-4 carbonate is telling you that chromium has a plus four charge. Carbonate is on the back of your periodic table, CO3 minus two. When you put those things together, you get Cr2, CO3, Four. Here's a great time to remind you that if you have numbers that you can reduce, you should. So that's going to be a 1, and that's going to be a 2. So your final answers are going to be CR, bracket, CO3, 2. Okay. Here's a really tricky one. I'm not going to give you too many of these, but Mercury 1. Whenever you see Mercury, the light bulb has to go off in your head. Mercury is strange. Mercury 1 is actually HG2. If you don't trust me, just look on the back of your periodic table. HG2. But the charge on Mercury 1 is actually plus 2. It's weird. Okay, You just got to remember to look on the back of your chart. Whenever you see Mercury, slow down. So Mercury 1 is actually HG2 with a plus 2 charge. And chloride is Cl minus. So you need two CLs to cancel off that plus two for mercury. So it's going to be HG2, that can't change, CL2. Okay, You're not reducing that because HG2 is the actual element. So to name these things, it's pretty easy. You don't need charges, you just need to know the names and you change the ending from uh, whatever it is on the periodic table to IDE. And if, if it's polyatomic, you just don't change the ending at all. So MgBr2, Mg is magnesium, and Br is bromine, so you change it to ide, bromide. Fe is iron, and SO4 is sulfate. Don't change the ending. But here's the thing. Iron, if you look on your periodic table, has more than one charge. So you need to use Roman numerals here. So I guess what I just said about you don't need to know the charges, I guess that's wrong. I guess you do need to know the charges. Take it back. So this Fe is something. SO4 is minus two. Since you've got one Fe and one SO4, this iron must be a plus two. Because plus two and minus two give you zero. Uh, Ba is barium. OH is hydroxide. Aluminum is Al, and 
F is fluorine, so you change it to fluoride. Okay, now we'll do the rest of those tomorrow. And uh, we will be stopping right here. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll start with this thing, the hydrates, uh, on the next video. Uh, see you in class tomorrow.